All right, so now let's go and look. Now that's roles. Now let's look at ACLs. So we're going to go in here as one of the, uh, oh, sorry, we want to go back to the company list, view the designs. Okay, now I'm with eSecurity. I come in, I'm going to review this. So I see that I can't view anything on this page. I'm going to have to prove that I'm me. So I go to the login page and I say, now these people from eSecurity are very secure, secure conscious. So, so their usernames are secure minded and secure freak. Right? They, all they think about all day is security. So okay, so now I'm logged in, I want to view my own designs. Okay, we have a problem. Now I can't, why can't I see my, my, my designs of my company? Well, this is the case where we need to grant access to a particular user. Maybe we don't want to grant access to everyone yet. Let's just say we want to grant access to the, the reviewer from their company, the, the uh, representative from the company that's reviewing the, maybe the marketing uh, head. So let me log in as the designer again. Now I'm going to go into the designs and I'm going to give access to this design. So at the bottom here you can see it says the permission is the role admin is granted the view permission. Well that's not enough. So let's go to assign permissions and what we want to do is we want to give access to a particular person. So let's say secure minded can view. Okay? And then we apply that. So now we see that the simple principle secure minded, so a person whose username is secure minded can view this particular object. The way that's done is in our form, you saw that there's three uh, select boxes. There's roles, members, and actions. So the members, in Seam, there's a built-in identity manager component that can list all the users in the system. So that's how we populated that list. Now, of course, you can extend this however you want. You could design your own wrapper around uh, Seam's identity manager. The nice part is that out of the box, you can start doing this without having to write any code. So right in the view, I'm just listing all the users. Then I'm using the permission manager to say, what are the available actions that can be performed on this object? And those actions are defined using annotations on the class that represents a design. So if we were to go into the design, for instance, we would see that I'm defining that you can view and comment on this. These are non-actionable. Right? These are just references. These annotations just say, specify an intent to do something. It's up to the rule or the ACL to enforce this. So what I do is, on that form, I press submit, and then, again, I use the permission manager, which is a built-in component scene, to, first I clear out all the permissions just so I can add the new ones, and then I say, for every member, add a new permission where the target is the current design, the action is, in this case, the action I selected, which was view, and P would be the person who I selected. And then I just call permission manager, grant permissions, and I just say, write all this stuff to the database for me. So again, I'm not having to do any of this work. This is all built in, baked into Seam. So now we're not in the rule file when we go to view. This is going to check the ACL. So we go back to, Let's see, I'm a designer there, here we are. So I go back to here and I press refresh. All right, now I can see something. So how is it doing that? How does it do that check? Well, if we go to the designs page, which I don't have up, let's pull that up. Oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry, in the design manager. Okay, so on that page, I need a list of designs that, that the person's gonna view. So what I do is I look at the current company that is associated with the person who's logged in, and I execute a JPA query. I say, select all the designs where the company is the current company. Then I use this method on identity called filter by permission. And what this does is it takes the result list, it takes the action they're trying to perform, and it runs through that permission resolver to try to determine which of those objects that came from the database are viewable. And it'll just knock out all the ones that aren't so that you now have a list of things that the user is allowed to see. It will check both ACLs and rules, but in this case, it's just ACLs. And then we can see the, the particular uh, column. But on refresh, it goes to On refresh, it 
Yeah, it, it re-executed. Mm -hmm. So, and finally, what about, okay, let's say, the fi as the final thing, let's say we, we don't want to have to go in, every time we upload a design, we don't want to have to go in and then pick a person that can view it. What we want is our client to view it. Well, this is an example where we're going to take ACLs and we're going to crossbreed them with rules. Because what we want to do is we want to give the users a virtual role. The role is that they are a client. This is a contextual role. The way that you become a client is that your company and my company are linked. Once you have that role, then we can go in and apply a rule on that. So this time, when we go into, as the designer, we're going to scratch all this, the permissions we have. And instead, we're going to say, client can view. OK, now if we go back over here and we refresh again, we can still view. So how does that work? We're going to scroll down here to here. The client can view the design. So the way this works is we say that the design, that's, the, the company that's associated with that design has to have you as an employee. Okay. Once you do that, you say that gives you the client role temporarily. Now check that against what we're trying to do, client view. So we're using the rules to give you a role temporarily so that we can then check against that role. So this is a very powerful thing that you can do here because now you have a contextual role in addition to the contextual rule. So what have we learned? First, Seam Security is easy to adopt. It's just three simple steps. You can get authentication set up. And there's all of this range of authorization methods you can call. Configuration is really kept to a minimum, especially if you use the identity manager. You can just use some annotations, and you're ready to go. There's tons of built-in security components. We saw declarative authentication components. Uh, we saw identity management, and we saw permission management. And then doing the authorization, you can either use the role, the rule, the ACLs, or a crossbreed of rules, roles, and ACLs. And most importantly, the security model matures with your application. What we were doing there, applying a view operation to a client dynamic role, is quite a sophisticated thing to do. So likely this is going to cover just about you know 95% of all things that you need to do. And then you can go in and obviously use Java if you have to, if all else fails. I talk about securing SIEM applications heavily in Chapter 11 of my book, including a very detailed section on drools with a, with a soft introduction to drools and very, very detailed how you would use and set up the rule-based security. Check out the in.relation.2 blog if you're interested in SIEM stuff in general. And over there I have, again, a detailed blog entry describing how to do identity management in SIEM. You can check out this DZone article on ACL security in SIEM, which talks about the ACL security that I showed you. And finally, all of that code that you just saw is available on my books uh, code repository. Thank you all for attending. If you have any questions, uh, you can come find me. I'll be around for a while.